Welcome back to my channel and by popular demand we're going to be taking a look at how I created these rocks within ZBrush for my recent desert path scene. This process uses ZBrush with a combination of mega scans to create believable rock assets without having too much of an advanced knowledge base within the sculpting software itself. Listening to your guys' comments and engaging with the community has really been great. It's really helping me point my videos into the direction that everyone here wants to see. So we'll be doing more content about, you know, these specific subject matters, which you all keep posting about. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to this one. In this part, we're going to be taking a look at how to create the actual models. And then in part two, we're going to be taking a look at how I created the material uh, for these specific assets without having to do any sort of UV wrapping or using substance paint or everything for the materials are done in Unreal Engine. But we'll be getting into that in part two. For now, let's take a look at the sculpt. Here we are in ZBrush and we're going to be recreating this rock boulder that I did for my recent desert environment. And we're going to be doing it in a time effective and easy to do manner, which doesn't necessarily require a high level of technical knowledge in ZBrush. It just requires some simple basics and different brushes that we're going to be going through and some just really... Uh, beginner to intermediate level understanding of ZBrush in order to get an effective look. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring in a cube. So I already came in here. If you guys are curious how I got these cubes in here, I just come in here. You just find uh, wherever it is. Where is it? I just saw it. Cube like that. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go back to whichever your primary project is. And then from there, under Subtools, you're going to go to Append, and then grab that cube. You want to make sure that it is poly mesh, so if it's just Cube 3D, you want to make sure that you are going to make poly mesh 3D. Uh, this way you can sculpt on it. Now let's go back to this right here, and I'm just going to kind of move it into place a little bit. Solo it, it's transparent it, okay. And so I'm going to do this a bit a bit quick. You know, the the primary function of this video is to show you guys the process. So depending, uh, us completely finishing it will, in this video, will depend on how fast we can get this done, as well as teaching you guys how to go about creating this. Okay, so you can either create a predefined shape in an external program, such as Blender, 3ds Max, Maya, Houdini, whatever it may be. Uh, even Unreal Engine, for example, you can just export the block out and bring that in, which is, that, which is actually what I did for the original uh, piece here. Uh, but let's say we're just going to work from a cube here. So from here, I'm just going to solo it for the time being. And we see we only have 482 active points. Turn this on. And right now, I'm just going to divide it. Uh, let's our smoothing one. Just divide it a few times. Uh, we don't need a high number right now because we're just going to carve in the the larger shapes. So let's go in here, increase the brush size, and let's unsolo this. For me personally, I always have a scale model in my scene. This way I know that I am working in the proper scale. So let's come in here and I'm just going to start carving this, carving this out. And the the more at at the beginning of the process when you're doing this, you're really just making really quick, rough uh, sculpts. You're not doing anything too crazy. You're just you know you're not getting too much into the detail. I mean, you're just coming in here and just roughing in some shapes. You know, there might get some errors like like this sort of stuff going on with your mesh where it's poking out. That's fine. All these things are going to be fixed. We're not we're not worrying too much right now about the actual, you know, fidelity of the mesh and how it's, you know, how perfect it is. We're just trying to get the rough sort of shape in here. So I'm just going to keep doing this, doing this. Now let's make this a little bit bigger. I could probably turn down the intensity on this brush, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to keep it as is for now. And as you can see, I'm not being super precise with my brush strokes. I'm just really carving away, just just 
really just trying to get some shape into this. You know, again, we're not focusing on making anything too beautiful just yet. We're not focusing on the details or, you know, how good is the shape uh, right quite yet. We're just going to be sculpting this out a little bit. And we're going to be doing it haphazardly. So let's get some shapes in here. And if anyone's really new to ZBrush watching this uh, and you're curious as to how you like push and pull uh, when you're sculpting, if you just left click, you know, you're going to pull it out. If you hold alt on your keyboard, you're going to push it back in. So if anyone's curious about that. Okay, so here we have this blobby sort of shape. Uh, what we're going to do next is we could do we could do this one of one of a few ways. We can either hold control and highlight some of the areas and move it if we want to adjust the shape a little bit. Uh, we can also let, let's let's do both for the sake of this video. So we could do it that way. Uh, we could also use the move tool. So move topology. And this rock is a bit too big for this. Um, as we can see, the brush size is almost max. Um, and it's only pulling a little bit bad. But you can use the move tool to sort of add some different sort of shapes and undulations into it. Okay, so let's say that's all fine and dandy. And what we're going to do next. So we need to fix some of this. Obviously, the geometry is really low quality. The, you know, we got this sort of mess going on from the uh, from the masking. So let's do that one. Okay, delete lower, delete higher. And from here, we're just going to DynaMesh it. Keeping a low resolution is fine. And just wait for it to, to go. I added a bit too many points for what it is, so we're going to undo that. Going to bring the resolution back down. 200. All right, that should be fine. Maybe even... Mm, let's see. And we don't need a Z remesh right now. Okay, so come in here. I'm just going to hold shift and soften up some of these, some of these areas that might be a bit too messed up. Uh, these things right here, if you get these errors for the sake of this, we're not really going to worry about it. Uh, again, you know, if you're doing a super precise sculpting, then those are things that we would want to, of course, take a look at and fix. Uh, but for now, uh, this is going to be okay. So next thing we're going to do, even though we are going to overlay this with those mega scan rocks, let's, oops. Even though we are going to overlay this with those mega scan rocks, uh, we do want to add a little bit more detail because some of this stuff is actually going to be showing. We're not; it's not going to be 100% mega scans. Might be anywhere from, you know, 75 to 90%. So what we're going to do? Go into Lightbox, go to Brush, and then we're going to find the where is it? Trim, Trim Smooth Border. Okay. And what this is going to do, it's going to cut into the mesh and it's going to create these harder sort of edges. And you can get really detailed into this and really precise. Again, it's for the sake of this video, so it's not super long. We're just going to go pretty quick and just you might not even do it all the way. Yeah, for the sake of this video not being an hour, two hours. Uh, let's just, I just want to show you how to use the brush. Uh, what I tend to do sometimes is I'll use the square alpha on it. Let me turn the brush size down a little bit. Because uh, then it just sort of carves in in a different sort of way and it can create a little bit more uh, sort of variation to what you're doing. So you can continually do this to the mesh and add more rocky shapes and all that. Uh, but for now, I'm going to show you the part that many of you probably want to see, which is how do we essentially take a low poly or, you know, low resolution sort of mesh that doesn't look final, and how do we make it look final by bringing in additional assets and how do we work with them. So what we're going to do 
is I so I already exported some mega scan rocks from the Quixel bridge. Uh, if you're exporting them directly from Unreal Engine, make sure to turn Nanite off before you do that. Otherwise, uh, otherwise you're going to get the fallback mesh exported, so you'll get a lower resolution mesh. So, again, for this, we're going to come over here, go to Append, and I'm just going to grab, let's say, this one, select it, and I'm just going to move this one into place. And you could always get more precise, and uh, you could... Oops, wrong one. If you hold Alt on the keyboard and drag, you can move the pivot point. You can also just press the unlock button. It'll also tell you what the hotkey is if you hover over it. Okay, so now we're gonna scale this up a little bit. Something like that might be fine. Okay, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna duplicate this. And we're going to we're just looking for opportunities for shapes pretty much. So all that we're doing here is just going around, trying to figure out what works, what doesn't work. Okay, and you could keep this, uh, but what we're gonna do uh, for the sake of maintaining cleaner geometry so we don't have a bunch of intersection, uh, even though utilizing Nanite is great with an Unreal Engine, uh, we still want to make sure that we're not getting too carried away. We still want to do sort of best practices uh, regardless of what we're doing. So I'm going to hold control on the keyboard, come over here to Lasso, and these parts that are intersecting into the mesh, I'm just going to grab these. These are the parts that just aren't going to be seen. So now we have these masked off, press control W. What that does is it splits it. And so what we're going to do is on the outside one, you're going to hold control shift and then left click. And now it gets rid of that masked portion. So I might have masked too much. Yep. So let me just undo that. Do it this way. And I'll usually leave like a little bit that goes into the geometry just so we don't get that issue that we just saw. So let's do that, that, oops. There we go. Let's go back into freehand and hold control and alt if you're using freehand to just paint it out like this. Okay, now hit Control W and then Control Shift left click. Okay. And now it's actually going into the rock, but we're not seeing any excess geometry anymore. Uh, from here, to get rid of those, you're going to need to go to Geometry, Modify Topology, Hold Shift, Delete Hidden. And so now the mesh is just going to be this piece. So we have that. Uh, we can clean it up even further. Get rid of this stuff. I usually save the bottom for last. And so again, what we're going to do is we have a few other rocks here. We're going to come in here, append, and grab one of these. And again, we're going to hold Alt on this and move it up. If anyone is curious as to the hotkeys to get to this, move, scale, rotate, it's you just press W, E. R. I usually just press W because all the controls are here anyway. I'm just going to go back to, uh, let's move it, this down, let's scale this down. Let's move this around. We got the right sort of orientation for it. Let's move this into place. Move it all right here maybe. Okay, uh, and then again, another thing you can do, which I was doing for mine, is come back here to the move tool, and we're going to, this one might be a bit much, so let's actually come in here, mask off some of this, grab the lasso tool, and I'm just going to 
grab this piece. This is a bit much. We're not going to need this much. Okay. And again, Control W. There we go. And then come here to delete hidden. And then with the pieces that are exposed, we could just move them. You could you could just if you're doing it like this, I'd probably just delete these pieces, but Actually, yeah, for this one. Yeah, we just want this piece, so. For this one, let's just come in here. Delete these pieces. There we go. Uh, delete hidden again. And if we turn off ghost and transparent, you can see how we're starting to get these rock formations in here. And all you're going to do is just continually build this out. If you have pieces where, you know, there will be times where, let me solo this. Just to show, as you're like deleting pieces, um, there might be times where it's kind of showing like this, the the whole whatever you, you deleted, it's showing. And if that's the case, you're just going to use the move tool. And again, just come in here. You can either use solo or transparent, ghost. And you're just going to move these into the mesh. Now I will stress um, if anyone's watching this and maybe they work on games or they want to use something like this for games, uh, the what I'm showing now isn't necessarily meant for video games as people that work in games might know. Uh, you know this isn't, they, there are ways where you can project this onto a lower polygon mesh with cleaner, you know, um, with a cleaner flow but we're not really gonna get into that. We're just trying to, you know, make some nice rocks that look pretty good. And then come in here, and grab this last one. And it, it, all this is, is just rinse and repeat. Just grabbing these pieces, move them around. Uh, so it might be a bit too big. We can always scale it down. Let's grab this. What, how would it, what would be the best look? And just, you know, having fun with it. Just moving things around, seeing what works, what doesn't work. Uh, let's just say this, for example, I'm gonna grab this. Mm, let's see, transparent. Let's grab this. And another thing you can do, so instead of just deleting it, control W. Uh, so let's say we didn't want this piece right here um, because, you know, it's sticking out too much, but we didn't want to just delete it and have a bunch of um, open faces. We are going to have open faces, which we'll fix. But what you can do instead of deleting it, you can come over here to split and you can do group split and OK. And it's going to split it based on the group. So now we have these two separate pieces. Again, hold control, move it over, or hold alt, sorry, move it over. And then now we have this piece, we can move it around, put it into position if we want, if we wanted to use it. Move it around. Let's see where would be the best spot for it. This, this. Like this. Let's do that. Now let's do that. Move it back in. Rotate it. Like so. Okay. And for these pieces that are still hanging out, we just grab the move topology tool. And we just move them in so we're not seeing that. You know, you can spend a lot of time doing this, being more precise and, you know, really taking your time with it. And, yeah, and then you continually sculpt these out as well if if, if you wanted to. Because ultimately we're going to be using our own, we're going to be recreating our own material for this anyway. So, you know, after doing this process, we're not going to be able to just use, you know, the mega scans material that was made for this specific asset for obvious reasons. Uh, let's come up here, top, delete this piece, make sure I'm not getting this down here. 
Right, let's just delete all of this right here. Let's grab freehand. Okay. Just gonna delete all of this. We don't want to delete this. Don't want to delete that piece. Again, control W, control shift. That. Okay. Uh, modify. Delete hidden. But I hope you can already see how this process can be a lot faster than hand sculpting, you know, rocks and doing all that. Now, there's nothing wrong with hand sculpting rocks. I've hand sculpted rocks for projects. Um, I personally like hand sculpting rocks. However, if, you know, you're new to ZBrush, you want to learn the tools, um, or you just need to create something more quickly, you know, creating something like this from scratch uh, would definitely take a little bit of time to get it exactly correct so yeah if you if you just need something you know quick easy um, or easier I should say uh, then doing this sort of process you can definitely start making your own unique sort of rocks and shapes and just as you're doing it just again make sure that you are cleaning up the geometry it's like this sort of stuff the intersects you don't want this hanging out um, for, I hope, obvious reasons, the biggest one being optimization. Um, you know, you just don't really need any of that. You want to make sure that whatever you're doing is as clean as possible. And, yeah, you know, you'd want to come in here and delete all this stuff. And then all it is is just rinse and repeat for doing the same thing. You're just bringing in rocks, moving them into place, sculpting on a base mesh. Essentially, this is used as a guide, but I do like to sculpt it out a bit in case yeah, there's still bits of it showing. I'll, you know, we can have some de detail from that rock. All right. And then, yeah, and then you would just continue on from here pretty much. And then, of course, you know, you want to delete the bottom pieces. You would just, oops, you just... Come in here. I'm just gonna merge these right now. Merge down, merge down. Okay. Yeah, then you would just do the same thing to this. And then you do the delete hidden, and then, yeah, now you have a flat bottom. This piece didn't get merged, but, you know, we just do that. And then in the next part, we're gonna be looking at the how to texture something like this, how to texture a large rock piece, uh, how to do it in a more procedural sort of way, um, non-destructive uh, in Unreal Engine. So I'll see you guys there.